Hi, my name is Gerhard Schwartner, and welcome to Selling Power TV. Today, we have a very special guest, Tiffany Bova. She's a growth evangelist at Salesforce.com and a proud author of two books, and one of which is a book that made me think a little bit deeper. It's called The Experience Mindset. Welcome, Tiffany. Oh, Gerhard, thank you for having me. I thought your book is provocative because it forces leaders to think about two fields uh, where they need to create value. One is the employee experience, the other one is the customer experience. Let's start with the KPIs. How do you measure customer experience in a successful enterprise? And how do you measure the employee experience in a successful business? KPIs are kind of the lifeblood, right? It's sort of where everyone gets excited. And this balance between um, thinking about the customer and thinking about the employee, when it comes to KPIs, requires a lot more connection. So I'll just give one or two examples. One, net promoter score. That's probably one of the most well-known right. KPIs, if you will, for customer experience. Well, does your company do ENPS or employee net promoter score? If you do customer satisfaction, do you do employee satisfaction? Do you do customer effort score? Do you do an employee effort score? I want to do the KPI tracking at that moment that matters when they connect with a customer. You just had to take a customer from quote to cash on a scale of one to five, how much was your effort? Do you ask that kind of question or do you make it this very macro question, which doesn't get to the heart of where we have opportunity to make improvement? It makes a lot of sense. But now I want to zoom back just to the word mindset. Are you defining mindset as sort of the operating system of uh, the, the way people um, face challenges. Absolutely. You know, I use that word uh, on purpose. If I had advocated for a new role in the C-suite, people would have immediately gone, oh, it's an executive role, it's headcount, it's power, it's control, it's revenue, it's P&L, right? It's I can create this sphere of influence and all these things, right, that we think is really fantastic, but that will only get us so far. And so once I started talking about, well, no, we have to start thinking, if we make a decision for customer, what is the intended or unintended consequence for the employee? And that to me, as I'm having this conversation, right, that to me, Liz, was, it's really about a mindset. It's really about an experience mindset. And it came out of my mouth that I went, stop, that is the title for the book. So right. it was really an operating philosophy yeah. and a way by which the company from a cultural aspect right. can really start to make decisions differently. I see the mindset more or less like the inner CEO that is a governing body that makes decision in the moment. Sure. We bring our own set of biases. We bring yeah. our own set of understandings. We bring our own set of experiences. And so if you think about that, and uh, let's say that you know, you're listening to this and you're in product development. Well, if the product isn't developed well, because I showed up with these biases that I know this information, so I'm going to make the shortcut of how to do something in this product, but the user doesn't actually come with that set of understanding. Right. And so then it doesn't work and your salespeople are out there trying to sell it. And all they're hearing is complaints of, I don't know how to use it. It's too complicated. There was a disconnection between being able to allow that project or product developer, right? Or product product manager to say, hold on, I have to have a little bit of a beginner's mind, right? I have to almost forget everything I know so that I can design products and approach a market or an opportunity or a challenge with a new mindset. And so I think that this is just all part of it. And I think it also allows people to think differently about the quest for power versus the design of an experience. Let's just start from 2000. Like, let's not go back further than that. But if we talk about when we kind of cross the digital age, if you will, we designed a website to sell something and it was like, you know, 22 clicks to buy something. We've really improved that right now. It's one click. The friction for customer has an effort has gotten low. And by doing that, the experience for most customers has improved. But during that time, unfortunately, in the background, the effort for and friction for the employees went up. That gap between that experience of the customer and the experience of the employee has really come to the forefront. And I think the pandemic is what shined a light on the lack of investments we've made on employees right. as it relates to that experience. When I first started coming in, you know, we would say, oh my goodness, you know, 40% of a salesperson's time is spent on selling. 
60% of their time is spent on non-selling. That number is now 28% of their time is spent on selling. Yeah. That's it. So over time, 20 years ago, I was using a single user version of ACT or a single user version of Goldmine. So we don't have a technology problem. We have a people process problem. The challenge that I see is that as technology for salespeople specifically has gotten better, more automated, definitely more capable, sales reps have, have not become more willing to try it, to do it, learn about it, that the way I do it works, the way I do it has been successful. And if that were true, then the average quota attainment would not be sitting in the low 50% range. But there is opportunity for us to have a beginner's mind as sellers and be willing to try new things.